Welcome back, guys. Johnny Keck over at AMP Futures, and thank you back. Uh, thank you for tuning in once again. And today's video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to add indicators onto the TradingView platform. Uh, we've already covered a couple videos in, in relation to certain subjects, uh, such as how to execute trades off the chart and uh, how to use the basic charting within the platform. So now we're going to go ahead and take you into how to add technical indicators. All right, so let's uh, let's get right into it. As you can see, the platform is up and running. And it's pretty straightforward in terms of how to add technical indicators on TradingView platform. You'll see on the top left corner, the menu options, you'll see indicators as a, a menu selection. So what you'll do is you want to left click on that, and then you'll see pretty much the entire list of available indicators to use within the platform from A through Z. So there's two ways. You can either use the quick search tool. For example, if I just type in MACD, MACD, that, that's a quick way to add an indicator, as you can see. If you don't want to use the search, then you can just simply scroll down the list and just locate and identify the indicator that you'd like to add. So, for example, Bollinger Bands. Now, what happens is when you when you click on the indicator to add it, it most of the time traditional platforms will ask you what input values you'd like to apply first before adding the indicator. With TradeView, once you click on the indicator, it adds the indicator immediately. But however, it does not mean that you're limited to not using, or better yet, changing the parameters of the indicator. So now that we have a couple indicators added, let me just go ahead and show you how to make those changes if you want to change the input values of the indicators themselves. All right, so you can see here's the MACD, for example. Now this is a good example because right now we have Bollinger Bands and we have MACD added. So you can see the difference in display where MACD will display the indicator as a subchart, basically splitting the chart in half creating an additional chart on the bottom layer of the, of the chart itself. And when you have that type of char that, that type of indicator, you'll see menu options right on the subchart itself. So you see the little icon here, show hide. If you just click that, basically it just, it just hides the indicator, as you can see. If I show it, it shows it. This little button here, format, this will allow you to then change the input values of the indicator. So in this case, that's the, the, the fast length, slow length, signal length. 12, 26, and 9, you can change to a type of source, whether you wanted to source off the closing bar or the, or the close of the bar, the open, the high, or low, and so forth. And then, of course, you can go ahead and just change the style of the indicator, which is morely, morely focusing on the appearance of the indicator, so the colors. Uh, you know, what color do you want the histogram to be, the MACD itself, the signal. So a lot of this is going to be personal preference on how you change the parameters of the indicator and how it looks, and, of course, your input values. But again, you know, once you add the indicator, that will then give you the ability to get into the property of that indicator to make those changes. All right, so that's pretty much how you access the input value or property of the indicator if you're looking at a subchart indicator, as you can see here, which is the MACD. Now, if you have an overlaying indicator, such as the Bollinger Bands, notice that this is going right over the existing candles. Uh, let me disable that sell by sell button real quick. There you go. All right, and also, real quick, you see these little arrows? Those are just orders that I was doing earlier. If if you're watching this and you happen to have a lot of those in your chart from prior transactions, if you want to get rid of it, a quick way to get rid of it, just right-click on the chart, go to Properties, and just click on the Trading tab right here, and just uncheck Show Executions, and now that gets rid of those little markers there. So that might be, if you're doing a lot of scalping especially, that might be a good way to get rid of those trades so you don't see a bunch of arrows on the chart. All right, so this is going back to the overlaying indicator. What you're going to want to do is you want to left-click on the indicator, and when you do that, you'll see little dots appear. The dots are representing that you have that indicator selected. So the next step now, you can right-click on the chart, or better yet, on one of the circles, and then you'll have the option to format it. So if you format it, now you can see that it takes you right back to the property section for that specific indicator. All right, now another thing, you can still do the same thing with a subchart. As you can see, I was able to left-click it. You see the dots. And one thing I want to point out, if you want to move, let's say, the indicator... Perhaps you can see here, this is a subchart on the bottom. So if I right click, if you notice, there's an option that, that allows you to merge it up. So that will then overlay the actual MACD indicator over the entire chart because it's already a subchart. All right, so now if I go back and I unmerge it down, it just puts it back to a default state based on the default setting of how the MACD is going to be displayed on the chart itself. All right, so I want to just point that out. If you, you know, if you have a preference in how you want the indicator to be displayed, Left click on the indicator, you'll see some dots appear. When you see the dots appear, and then that's giving you a, a notification letting you know that, hey, you've selected the indicator now. Now you want to right click on it, and then you just want to make sure you select merge up if you'd like to merge it into the actual chart. It's a little different, however, with 
an overlaying indicator. So in this case, this is Bollinger Bands. If I go ahead and left click on it, now if I right click, and let's say if I unmerge up, so this will then put the indicator on the top half of the chart now, as you can see, or I can merge it down, which basically is the default method. But watch what happens if I unmerge it down. Now it creates it on the bottom of the chart. So this is basically this different display options that you have and how you want the indicator to be displayed within the chart. All right, so which is kind of cool. It gives you a little flexibility in terms of how you want the indicator to, to look on the chart itself. For myself, I'm just going to leave it as default. So I'm going to have this as a subchart and have that as an overlaying indicator. And that's pretty much how you add indicators onto the platform. Now, if you right-click on the chart and remove all indicators, that's a quick way of removing all the indicators. All right, so again, you're going to click on the indicators menu tab. You're going to locate the indicator that you want to add. And then, you know, at this moment, what you see is what is available. So if you don't see the indicator listed, then unfortunately, most likely it's not available. You can either use the search toolbar here to find the indicator quicker. So, for example, if you don't want to scroll down and look for volume, you can just type in volume, and it just automatically populates any indicator that's related to volume. And you can see these are the available list, the ones that are listed. And just be sure to click the specific one that you want to add, and it will add the indicator right onto the chart, as you can see. And then, of course, if you want to delete the indicator. And also, too, one thing I want to point out, when you add an indicator, it will be displayed also in the top left corner of the header title here. And you will still ha you'll have those options that you see there. So you actually, I take that back earlier, I mentioned that you can see these three options on sub-chart indicators. You can actually see it on all indicators in general. So you can see the little menu option here. So this might be a quick way to get in there and just, if you hit format, for example, you get right in there, you can see the input values, you can make those changes. And the style, of course. All right, and then I'll go ahead and remove the indicator by clicking the X, and now the indicator is removed. All right, so this is a, a quick introduction to how to add indicators onto the chart. It's very straightforward, very easy. Uh, probably by now you already knew how to do it prior to watching the video, but just, uh, just in case, these videos are designed for you to, to help understand exactly how to do it. So if you have any questions or running into any technical issues, uh, please give our support team a call. We're a 24-hour operation around the clock, 312-893-6400, extension 1 transfer over to the help desk. In the next couple videos, we're going to show you how to create indicator templates. The templates are very useful. What happens, for example, if you add a few indicators onto a chart, you make some changes, you change background colors, for example, or maybe you change the, uh, the, the color of the indicator itself. Uh, you, you use certain input values, and then you don't want to go through those changes to apply that indicator onto the next chart. You can create templates, so therefore it saves you a lot of time. You can apply those templates right onto that chart, and therefore you don't have to go and make those changes for every single new chart that you apply. So we're going to cover that in the next video. And in the same video, I'm going to also show you how to create chart templates as well. So if, for example, if you create different layouts like background colors or you change the up and down colors of the candles, you can save those templates and you can apply them to any chart. Other than that, guys, for more videos, please, uh, please visit our YouTube channel. It's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Again, that's www.youtube.com forward slash AMP Futures. Thank you for your time. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. And happy trading.